the ITV News is next tonight, and then the real secret of how a small group of men changed the course of World War II by fooling Hitler. Is the father still around? No, no, he's still out before she's born. I don't even know who you are. She does. I mean, that's the other. No, 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 no. He's desperate. How would you feel if you couldn't see her? Brand new drama tomorrow at nine. Who's baby? TV drama premieres with HSBC, world-class drama with the world's local bank. It's down to you to choose the winners of the most sought-after awards. The 10th National Television Awards Live, Tuesday at 8. You have to, could you? You couldn't stand to make a fool of yourself. I think the behaviour is absolutely shocking. If you were like you ought to, get away with blue murder. You because couldn't, you couldn't handle it, couldn't you, my sweet? Oh, that's it! It's every little excuse. I want to go home! Holiday Showdown, Thursday at 9. 10.35 tonight, Fooling Hitler, a dramatized documentary, tells the story of the World War II deception, Operation Bodyguard. Then 5 past 12, Grand Prix highlights. All that after the news. Massacred. 50 Iraqi soldiers are ambushed by rebels. Brutal killings raised new fears about the British mission to northern Iraq, set to begin within days. Also tonight, Florida or bust candidates descend on the crucial state. Fighting on, right to life mother on her care campaign. Speak out for them. If you're not happy with what the doctor's saying, don't sit there and say nothing. And wrecker Wayne. Rooney ends the Arsenal record. Good evening. Even by the grim standards of modern Iraq, it's an horrific crime. Fifty army recruits brutally murdered by terrorist fanatics. The attack fuels concerns that British troops, today preparing for a new mission, may soon face grave dangers. The atrocity happened when the Iraqi soldiers were ambushed on their way home from a military camp near Kirkush, northeast of Baghdad. Their bodies were later dumped near the Iranian border. Simon Harris has the latest. Their minibuses halted at a fake checkpoint. The unarmed soldiers were forced to lie face down before being shot in the head. Once again, the brutal calling card of Abu Musab al-Zakawi. Just days earlier, the new recruits had completed training. It is one of the worst attacks on Iraq's fledgling security services, a reminder of the growing lawlessness gripping this country. And these are the soldiers America says it needs to stem the violence. The Black Watch taking part in a final parade before heading north. They're wanted for their combat skills, and the words of their commanding officer could easily have been an eve of battle rally cry. This regiment beat Napoleon, beat the Kaiser, and beat Hitler. For the jocks of the Black Watch, this is just the latest chapter in our history, and another job to be done. With its firepower as well as its history, the 1st Battalion is a formidable armoured battle group. But the troops are leaving the relative stability of southern Iraq for more dangerous territory, the so-called Sunni Triangle. A bit apprehensive, I suppose. It's a new area. We've well, been there, somewhere a bit different. But uh, we're all ready. We've had plenty of training and we're all ready to go at a moment's notice. Now that we know that we're gone, I suppose there's an element of excitement, looking forward to going up there, doing something different that we haven't done already. Fighting talk, but for the families at home, there is much to worry about. In a year of marriage, Corporal Craig Buchanan has spent just 13 weeks with his wife. His father, Jim, is anxious about what awaits the troops and angry that they're being used to plug an American hole. Well, just look at the Americans. They can't even control the area they're in just now. They've been there the same time as our troops. Our troops have done their job. Now they want us to go in and fix it for them. This is going to be a Vietnam for us if they keep going the way they're going, yeah? Yeah. 
With the ever-present threat of terrorist attack, even the journey north for these men will be risky. The timing and route of their convoy is a closely guarded secret. In the weeks ahead, their job will be to reinforce an American security operation, freeing up other US troops for an expected assault on the town of Fallujah. And Simon's at the Ministry of Defence tonight. Simon, we saw all too clearly the dangers British troops may face. Uh, this could get tricky for the government. Yes, Steve. Tomorrow, the Defence Secretary, Jeff Hoon, faces questions in the Commons. And a taste of what he can expect from MPs came today from three veteran political heavyweights. Former Conservative Cabinet Ministers Lord Hurd, Lord Heseltine and Kenneth Clark told ITV they believe the deployment of the Black Watch is politically motivated a response to the American elections. Now that's categor categorically denied by the government, which says there are compelling military operational reasons and that despite the risk, the dangers are acceptable. Uh, they will also be, there will also be questions about who's in charge. The MOD says it's a British general in Basra. Back to you. Simon, of the MOD, thank you. Four years ago, it decided the election. This time, there's every chance the state of Florida may again choose America's next president. No surprise, the challenger, John Kerry, was there today, beginning a frantic last week of campaigning. The latest tracking poll gives President Bush 48%, just two points ahead of Mr. Kerry on 46, well within the margin of error. From Florida, Robert Moore reports. The challenger was where you would expect him to be on a Sunday morning with nine days to go, in a church and in Florida, the state that's again become so crucial. We ask for your prayers for all of us as this human family to come together and unite to find the common ground and to climb that mountain and to finish this journey. From God the Father, God the Son. Florida is being fiercely contested just like four years ago. John Kerry and President Bush badly need to win here. The President was also in the state yesterday, trying to drive home a single message, that Americans should not risk changing Commander-in-Chief amid a war. The terrorists who kill thousands of innocent people are still dangerous and determined to strike us again. The outcome of this election will set the direction of the war against terror. The most solemn duty of the American president is to protect the American people. So we're about to enter the final week of campaigning. And for the candidates, it's all about focusing. Focusing on the key states, like here in Florida, and focusing on one core message that resonates with ordinary voters. Whether the president's message wins through, we will only know on November the 3rd. But he's now moved on to the American West, trying to make sure he holds on to territory that until recently seemed secure. Kerry's message and his focus is on the economy. Every photo opportunity now designed to show him as a man in touch with the anxieties of ordinary Americans. A clear choice. Both campaigns concede the polling shows this race to be extremely close, especially in those critical battleground states. Robert Moore, ITV News. Florida. Some other stories making the headlines tonight. Five people have been arrested in connection with the murder of school teacher Robert Simons. The 45 year old from Chiswick in West London was stabbed to death during a burglary at his home on Wednesday. The government has unveiled new measures to crack down on antisocial behaviour. Witnesses will be given more protection in what ministers claim is a rebalancing of the law towards the victim. And a series of measures to beef up security around Parliament could be on the way. A report obtained by a Sunday newspaper has recommended electric fences, roadblocks and a barrage on the Thames. The mother who went to the court to prevent doctors withdrawing treatment from her terminally ill son has spoken for the first time about the case. Ruth Winston-Jones said although she hadn't won an outright victory, she'd carry on campaigning for the rights of families. She told our reporter Jason Farrell that every sick child deserved a fighting chance. It's been a remarkable and unpredictable nine months for Ruth Winston-Jones. Her son Luke, given just days to live, has defied medical opinion and she has challenged it in the courts. To any parents who, who has a child with Edward Syndrome, 
you know, please speak up for your child. Some children do live with Edward syndrome. They don't all die. Last week in the High Court, Ruth won the right for Luke to receive some life-saving treatments if needed. But the judge ruled that doctors had the right to withhold mechanical ventilation treatment. He is a true fighter. He is amazing. But at the end of the day, some problems are still there. Um, full resuscitation has been awarded to Luke. The judge has not made it in order for ventilation never to be used on Luke. But so we've heard, the hospitals have already said they would not ventilate Luke. But Ruth has successfully challenged medical opinion. She triumphed because she was able to prove that mother and child had formed a bond, something experts said was impossible given Luke's condition. Luke has formed a bond with me, and I have formed a complete bond with him. Um, as soon as I walk into the room, I walked in last night after leaving London. He looked at me, and he smiled. I was told that Luke would never smile. Luke has never been out of hospital. Ruth's next ambition is to take him home. Jason Farrell, ITV News. Sport now, and the much-anticipated clash of the Premiership Titans lived up to its billing this afternoon. Arsenal's bid to extend their unbeaten run to a landmark 50 matches was crushed by Manchester United. However, it wasn't just events on the pitch that grabbed the headlines. Alex Thomas is at Old Trafford this evening. Manchester United always enjoy beating Arsenal, but they were particularly relished here at Old Trafford, ending the Gunners' record unbeaten Premiership run. Wayne Rooney, with another match-winning performance, will have grabbed the headlines leaving the United fans talking about nothing but football. But earlier in the day, they had protest on their minds. Hundreds of supporters breaking through police lines to march down to Matt Busby Way to object to the possible takeover by American tycoon Malcolm Glazer. They caused chaos in United's Superstore, forcing it to be closed for half an hour. Expensive for the club, but worth it for the fans vowing not to rest until Glazer's interest ends. A lot of the protesters will have missed the kickoff, but not the action in a hugely hyped match. Nil-nil at half-time, the game came alive in the second half when Wayne Rooney won a penalty for Manchester United. Replays suggested Arsenal's sole Campbell was a little unlucky. But all credit to Ruud van Nistelrooy, who failed from the spot last year, but not this season. And after creating the first goal, Rooney scored the second in the dying minutes to end Arsenal's record unbeaten run. Being left is over, but I mean, who's gonna who's gonna get 49 games unbeaten? Again? Eight who's gonna get it again? Points. Probably deserve win. Yeah, two 0 Yeah, it should have been a second penalty, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll take two. We'll yeah. take two. I'm happy enough for that. They can beat the rest, but they can't beat the best. <laughs> <laughs> so the United fans left singing in the rain after a win that could have a major impact on the Premiership title race. Alex Thomas, ITV News, Manchester. Elsewhere in the Premiership, Newcastle beat Manchester City 4-3. Craig Bellamy scoring the winner in the final minute. Middlesbrough drew one all with Portsmouth, and Southampton versus Birmingham was goalless. That match was marred by an ugly incident late in the game, involving Birmingham's Damian Johnson and Neil McCann. Both players escaped punishment. There were three matches today in the Scottish Premier League. Hearts won the Edinburgh derby, beating Hibernian 2-1. Celtic were predictable winners over Livingston 4-2. And Rangers drew one all with Dundee United. In motor racing, the Brazilian Grand Prix went to the wire. It was a tense duel between Juan Pablo Montoya and Kimi Raikkonen, with Montoya triumphing by just a second. Philip Ray Smith watched the race. Five lights on, when they go off, we'll be racing! The final race of the Formula One season and a wet start in Sao Paulo. Even world champion Michael Schumacher was struggling, spinning on turn two of the second lap as he tried to overcome the handicap of starting 18th. Fire, not water, was Jensen Button's problem, though, forced to retire just one lap later. His BAR Honda engine had been smoking from the starting grid. Oh no, that's just what they didn't need. And disappointment for Jaguar on their last race in Formula One. Christian Klein turned in on teammate Mark Webber on lap 26, forcing Webber out of the race. A sad end to his career with the Jaguar team. In the end, it was Montoya for Williams versus future teammate Raikkonen for McLaren. The Colombian took the chequered flag by just a second, 
Rubens Barrichello in front of a home crowd came third. Philip Raysmith, ITV News. And that's it from all the team here. Good night.